Pneumoconiosis is respiratory disease caused by inhalation of mineral dust. Lung damage is caused when the dust particles are toxic to macrophages, stimulating fibrosis. These particles are usually silicates, often mixed with minerals such as coal and iron oxide. Black lung. In simple coal workers' pneumoconiosis, the nodules are 2 to 5 millimeters in diameter and there is no clinically significant respiratory impairment. In complicated coal workers' pneumoconiosis, nodules are larger than 10 millimeters, otherwise known as progressive massive fibrosis. It is a progressive disease even after the exposure to coal dust ends, resulting eventually in respiratory failure and core pulmonale. This is a picture of a killer. A killer that takes the lives of coal miners every year. A killer that creeps into the lungs of its victims, slowly Cold and insidiously. Cold. The contamination in the lungs is so great that the miner is no longer able to work. This contamination, or disease of the lungs, is called coal workers' pneumoconiosis, sometimes referred to as black lung. Pneumoconiosis is caused by coal dust particles that are retained in the lungs. Here they are shown greatly magnified on the screen of a microprojector. The miner will be unaware of his condition for many years until the physical symptoms first appear. By then, it is too late, for all too frequently, the disease can lead to death. Since there's no known cure for the disease, the Mine Safety and Health Administration is dealing with technical means to control its cause. At the present time, the only practical way of preventing pneumoconiosis is through the control of respirable dust levels. Once the disease exists, there is no known medical cure. Therefore, health clinics for the care of minors suffering from respiratory diseases will continue to be needed. But this need can be reduced through prevention of the disease by reducing the concentrations of respirable dust to safer. For two decades, it has been a mystery as to what the jets are spraying on us. Finally, we know the source material of these jet chemtrails. Coal ash is reprocessed to create the chemtrail base mixture. Chemtrail residues in rainwater have the same mix of toxic metals as those found in coal ash from coal burning power plants. Such a huge amount of chemtrails is sprayed every day that there is no other source for these nano metal oxides except coal ash. Fly ash and bottom ash are created at every coal-fired power plant. Fly ash is rich in aluminum oxide, about 30%, which is the main chemical found in chemtrail rainwater tests. Coal combustion waste from power plants is the biggest industrial waste stream in the world, and about 120 million tons created each year in the USA alone. Over 50 million tons of fly ash is created in the USA each year by processing coal combustion waste. More than 40% of U.S. coal ash production is reprocessed into cement, road base, drywall, bauxite, shingles, plastic filler, and non-publicized uses like chemtrail mix. The use of fly ash has more than doubled since chemtrails began in the mid-1990s. Chemtrails account for millions of tons of coal ash reuse every year. Secret chemtrail mix is labeled component of flowable fill in coal ash industry documents. 39% of the electricity generated in the U.S. is made by burning coal. Disposing of the ash at each coal-burning power plant is a billion-dollar problem, with most ash put in nearby landfills at a very high cost. After the Kingston, Tennessee coal ash spill in 2008, the electric utility paid over $1 billion and spent over five years to clean it up. 
secret chemtrail program receives fly ash from coal-fired power plants at a very low cost since the power plant operators are trying to get rid of the ash. Railroad or barge transportation makes it easy to move millions of tons of processed fly ash to secret air bases. All coal electric utilities use transportation such as railroad.